Good morning, everyone. A very big welcome to our service um, this morning and to those people who are visitors. As we count our blessings of being able to meet and still connecting, we are mindful of the measures that are helping to keep our community safe in our social distancing. The good news is that we can sing now. And because of the slow rollout of the vaccine and the continuing danger, we're doing our bit by waiting to start communion until the situation is clearer. Part of our care is supporting St Matthews by direct debit, our tap and go machine at the back of the church, and using the collection bags as you depart, so we continue to help the homeless and so many others. <coughs> we follow the services set out in the order of service sheet, and our opening hymn is hymn number 130, Hail the Day That Sees Him Rise. Please omit the verses three, four, and five. Thank you, everyone. Good morning. Today we are celebrating the Ascension. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Christ is risen. Alleluia. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And remembering, of course, the uh, great need for peace throughout the world and uh, the tragedies we might think about in, uh, well, in the Holy Land. And remembering the way that people are so uh, disconnected. Remembering also those people in India who are having such a dreadful time. We affirm the peace of Christ and the peace that we have with one another. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with so you. I'd like to acknowledge ourselves, do we? Each other. Um, and our lovely choir and, and organist, there we are. Thank you. 
And we continue. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires are known, and from whom your secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we celebrate Ascension, looking forward to the connection of God's spirit of love, we ask for forgiveness, healing and strength. God, our creator, you have made us one family on earth, but many find themselves separated instead of connected. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Jesus, our redeemer, we share your forgiveness, but our world is sharing fear and anxiety and especially remembering your children in India. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Living Spirit of God, your mercies rise new every morning. Help us to share the light of hope in challenging times. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May God forgive us, Christ renew us, and the Spirit enable us to live in love. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us pray. Loving God, who welcomed your only Son back into your kingdom in heaven, following his passion and resurrection, leave us not comfortless, but give us the gift of your Holy Spirit to comfort and connect us and lift us up through Jesus Christ, our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. Will you please be seated for the reading. A reading from the first chapter of St Paul's letter to the Ephesians, beginning at the 15th verse. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you, as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead 
and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. I'd like to stand for the reading of the Gospel. The Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Now after Jesus rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, from whom he had cast out seven demons. She went out and told those who had been with him while they were mourning and weeping. But when they heard that he was alive, and had been seen by her, they would not believe it. After this, he appeared in another form to two of them as they were walking into the country. And they went back and told the rest, but they did not believe them. Later, he appeared to the eleven themselves as they were sitting at the table, and he upbraided them for their lack of faith and stubbornness because they had not believed those who saw him after he had risen. And he said to them, Go into all the world and proclaim the good news to the whole creation. The one who believes and is baptised will be saved, but the one who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. By using my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes in their hands. And if they drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sick, and they will recover. 
So then the Lord Jesus, after he had spoken to them, was taken up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and proclaimed the good news everywhere, while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the message by the signs that accompanied it. For the gospel, the good news of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My words be to the glory of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the power of the Spirit. Amen. Will you please be seated? I don't know if you're married, uh, whether you've ever managed to miss your wedding anniversary. I'm sure that can be quite a tricky thing to do. I know that if you ever have done that, uh, you'll probably never do it ever again. There are all sorts of people close to home who will remind you or perhaps the birthday of a loved one. The days do skip by and people get very busy and all of our diaries are full. Most of us do know when Christmas is and Good Friday and Easter Day. I'm not sure we're so good on Ramadan or Eid, but we're perhaps getting better. As far as the Christian story goes, Maundy Thursday doesn't really get much of a look in and the Ascension well, it may be news to you that the Ascension was actually last Thursday. So if you're looking forward to it, you've missed it. I was actually ordained on the eve of the Ascension more than 30 years ago, um, and, but it's not on my calendar. I didn't get any cards, no Facebook posts, uh, and I was so relieved that I wasn't the only one who forgot. One of my friends who was there called me. He said, do you know what today is? I said, Give me a hint. <laughs> Thursday, Thursday, long time ago. Had more hair? No. <laughs> Sorry, I can't help you. Uh, well, even our, our lectionary uh, isn't exactly in its Sunday best either because the reading for the Ascension of Mark's Gospel does sound a bit out there and slightly strange. If you go through it, um, we're in most unfamiliar territory. First, there are words of condemnation. Oh, perhaps, of course, perhaps slightly more familiar when Mary Magdalene is not being believed. So starting the reading with a woman not being believed in her story perhaps is slightly contemporary. Um, but then condemnation, snake handling, uh, poison drinking exercises for new believers. Well, the last thing we want to do is finishing new Christ Christians off, I would have thought. Um, but what does that mean? Why is it there? It might interest you to know that it's widely held that nearly all of today's Gospel reading uh, was actually a later addition to the Bible, um, probably after a few drinks by somebody. Um, so don't take too much notice. But how are we to mark the ascension? What is the, the kernel, the essence of the whole celebration? When I was a bit younger and had more energy, I used to have lots of balloons, Mary Poppins' umbrellas, Harry Potter's, um, so those sort of things that he went off flying off brooms, I think. Um, uh, I think I had a picture of Sister Betrill, the flying nun. Um, and then also, there we are, and there we are, that's it. Uh, umbrellas, there we are, that's sort of Mary Poppins. That's it. But this, this one's slightly <coughs> uncooperative. Um, in churches, they have windows and carvings with little holy feet going up into the clouds. But I really wonder what it's all about. I, if you really want to know what, what anything's about, you ask a child. Um, and I remember when I was in England, I asked the children in my local school to draw pictures of the Ascension. And my favourite was, was this boy who, who did this picture of Jesus in the back of a car. 
I said, what's that? He said, he's being driven to the airport. Of course he is. I said, well, he gets up there. He has to get up some way, and he's about to take off. Well, I can't say that the Ascension has made um, an awful splash in the world, not so much as a hole in the ozone. The story was really far more exciting for people 2,000 years ago than it is for us today. You know, the story of Jesus defying gravity, taking off and disappearing is a total miracle. But for us, before COVID, thousands of Australians did it every day. It wasn't so hard to jump in a plane and then fly off somewhere. Now, of course, perhaps it might be more a miracle. Um, but it doesn't seem much of a miracle today. I wonder where the essence of the ascension is today. Well, after all, in those days, Jesus' life was uh, far re remote and almost irrelevant to us here on the other side of the world. To anyone except those who were close up, perhaps it was uh, not that very much exciting, but, but his departure actually looks forward to a global and universal relevance, a universal connection. The Jesus story is about to go into roaming. Jesus departs with a promise of a shared future, a faith for people with their feet on the ground, not with their heads in the clouds. When his spirit will create a community, as Mother Teresa said, to be Christ's hands and feet in the world. The community that finds its expression here on the other side of the world 2,000 years ago. Absolutely amazing. Or the words of Mary McKillop behind us. Never see a need without doing something about it. The sort of community that affirms those things. The sort of community that stands up for problems with aged care, for women, for refugees. If Jesus hadn't ascended, it would be someone else's story. It would be an analog, ancient story. But his departure singled, singled a new spiritual digital era of connection that would overwhelm anything known before. The community of God and his people to create not an institution to be obeyed, but a family to love. And there's nothing more dangerous than love, because love will take you anywhere. For love, you'll do anything. You might be told what to do, and perhaps when you were small, you know, do this, do that. Try that today. And before, because I told you so, perhaps doesn't wash. But you'll do absolutely anything for love. You might be threatened into doing something, but you know, you'll do anything for love. And so today we celebrate the spirit of love, that we will do anything for God. Anything, even though it might be personally costly, but we know that it's right. It's the most loving thing to do. Thomas Kelly was born in Ireland. He was ordained to the Church of Ireland in 1792. He was a celebrated preacher. But the Archbishop of Dublin didn't quite have the same view of him as everyone else had. And in fact, the Archbishop of Dublin uh, wanted to get rid of him, so he made his life difficult. He, um, he tried to silence him. Uh, but um, Thomas Kelly said, the gospel actually doesn't belong to you. The gospel belongs to all people. The gospel um, isn't, isn't within a church and is not bounded by my license. So uh, Thomas Kelly left. I don't know whether he jumped or he was pushed, but he certainly left. But he left well armed because he went with the gospel. He shared the gospel of love wherever he went. In fact, he hired a couple of buildings and started his own church. That's an idea, isn't it? But that's what he did. Um, and it was a, a community of people uh, that was founded on loving action. He was considered like the Charles and John Wesley of Ireland or the William Williams. Um, of Wales, who wrote, Guide me, O thou great Redeemer, um, when he was chucked out of the church and he went um, along the, the fields and the workplaces and shared the gospel there. Thomas Kelly had his feet on the ground 
but his heart in the right place. He knew the good news uh, didn't belong to an institution and didn't belong to a particular worldview. The good news belongs to God's people and is lived out through God's spirit of love. In fact, it's released into the world through the secret weapon, which is actually God's people, God's little people, God's small people with big hearts. And so he wrote from his own experience um, quite a few hymns. And just like the great hymns that have been born out of the crucible of suffering, um, then he's actually hit the mark and is still with us. Uh, because unlike things like Love Lifts Us Up Where We Belong, which is a great song, <laughs> he doesn't actually speak to a universal experience. And he wrote the hymn that we're going to be singing uh, towards the end of the service. The, the head that once was crowned with thorns is crowned with glory now. A royal diadem adorns the mighty victor's brow. The joy of all who dwell above, the joy of all below, to whom he manifests his love and grants his name to know. They suffer with their Lord below. They reign with him above. Their profit and their joy to know the mystery of his love. The cross he bore is life and health, though shame and death to him, his people's hope, his people's wealth, their everlasting theme. Please stand, and it may thrill you to know uh, that this morning we're actually going to be using a creed uh, which is uh, so very familiar, uh, which is the uh, Apostles' Creed. Someone said to me uh, during the week, why have we chucked out the creed? I said, no, we haven't chucked it out. We're just trying a new one for a while. They said, well, how about trying the old one for size? So I thought we might, while well, we still can remember it. <laughs> the Apostles' Creed. Let us affirm our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I'd like to be seated as the choir leads us in the anthem, God Has Gone Up by Lee.
I'm going to be bringing forward some uh, gifts for the assistance of those in need. And perhaps if you're not normally at St Matthews, you may not know that because of where we are in the world, uh, we have people who need help uh, every day. And um, someone was, uh, I think, saying, little Stevie was saying, what's, what, someone was asking Stevie, um, what are the, uh, the trolleys all about? And she was able to answer the question. This is because some people need things that they don't have. And it's our privilege to help them. So it's as simple as that, isn't it? And so we're going to be uh, singing Rejoice the Lord is King, which is hymn number 443, um, as these gifts are brought forward. So as we look at these gifts here, we might think about all those who have been moved by the Spirit of God to help others. It might be that someone might uh, need accommodation. Like I met someone yesterday afternoon who I think will be a, a candidate for a, <laughs> well not just a parcel, I think a parcel, perhaps a room, I think possibly a home and a community. Uh, it might be that they might need um, uh, medicine, um, they, they might need talk, a swag, um, a blanket, uh, but uh, we think about the way that God uses people like us uh, to help uh, people like them. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have these gifts to share, accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed be God forever. As we prepare for our prayers. I'd like to be seated as the choir sings, Be still, for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One, is here.
Let us pray. Let us pray for the world God loves, for churches and faiths walking together, and for all people according to their needs, saying, Lord of compassion, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for all who govern, for our own leaders and for those addressing the issues of aged care, human dignity, mental health, housing, education and well-being, giving thanks for all who lift up the lives of others, Lord of Compassion. Hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for all those in India. We pray for healthcare workers who risk their lives each day to heal and care for the sick with supplies that are running out, that they receive the medicines and equipment that they need to give vital treatment. Our special prayer for families and children waiting to come home for their comfort and protection. Lord of compassion, hear our, hear our prayer. We pray for all who carry the burdens of others, those who labour in difficult workplaces, for all women and those who live or work in unsafe or vulnerable circumstances. Lord, be whom, before whom no door is locked and no way is barred, we pray for those breaking down the barriers of discrimination and injustice in our day. Strengthen our faith and grant us strength to walk together in the ways of thankfulness and service. Lord of compassion, hear, hear our prayer. Let us pray for ourselves and each other, our healthcare workers and those who are isolated, aged or in challenging circumstances. Also for firefighters, farmers, police and all God's people that we might share light, peace, comfort and joy. Lord of compassion, hear our prayer. We give thanks for the implementation of vaccines across the world and all who are addressing fears and difficulties. We give thanks for the new ways in which we are connecting, appreciation for our local communities and all who serve in times of trouble. We pray for unity and understanding in this and every nation, and we pray for those who work for reconciliation. Lord of compassion, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Lord Jesus, who knew the agony of separation, we bring our fears and concerns, difficulties and challenges. Help us to wait in hope and to look for the coming of your kingdom where all your children are equally loved, valued and respected. Lord of compassion, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Loving God, you help us to be one in mind, body and spirit. Give to all your children a new heart to reach out in faith, hope and love and to walk gently with others until you bring us all safely home. Lord of compassion, hear our prayer. In the silence of our hearts, we bring before God those in special need or distress especially any known to us. We pray for those who have recently died and for those who are remembered with love at this time. Rest eternal, grant to them, O Lord, and let perpetual shine upon them. And I particularly remember those in, in Palestine as well. all those upon our hearts. In these times of change, lift our faith to share your loving care, protection and strength, and to find healing and hope. We offer our prayers to you in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Let us pray for peace, justice and forgiveness as Jesus taught his friends. Our, Our Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us in the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Loving God, show us the way, so we might see you more clearly, love you more dearly, follow you more nearly, day by day. You send, send us, us into, into the world you love. Give, give us grace to go thankfully and with courage in the power of your Spirit. Amen. Now that he's going to bring us the notices, thank you. Vicky, you seem to be particularly busy this morning. <laughs> Your pew, there's an awful lot going on. <laughs> well, they're all in bed with me all night. <laughs> there wasn't a lot of room, I'll tell you. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us this morning. And just some quick notices. Um, as I mentioned last week, we've been, um, our property, the investment property that belongs to the church uh, in West Albury in High Grove Place, um, has, the tenant has vacated and we have been doing some work on it. And I really have to say a very, very big thank you to David Murray, who's sitting down there, um, who has organised all of the people to help. Um, and there's been so many of you, Brian, David, Sutherland, um, uh, Mark's been um, organising it all, and we've done a lot of maintenance work up there, and it's now ready to re-let. And um, last week I asked about having some helpers, and I have some names here of people who could help, um, just to give it a quick once-over, a um, bit of a mop and what have you. And so if you're able to do that, we'd like to do it on Monday or Thursday. And uh, if you could see me at the end of the service, we could then just talk about some times, and that would be great. Um, <coughs> tonight at 8 o'clock on ABC Plus, there'll be a program that's called Compass. And it's going to be all about our very own Father Peter and the Aubrey community. And I'm told it's going to be fantastic, so please do tune in to that. Um, Essie and Ken have been married for 60 years this week. Congratulations. You don't get that for murder, do you? <laughs> anyway, I hope you have a great time this week. This week. Um, Children's Church is immediately after this service today, and Tunes on Tuesday will feature our very own Malcolm Palford on the organ, which will be fantastic at 10 past one on Tuesday. And <laughs> next Sunday is Pentecost, and we'll have the bishop here with us, so please do come along to that and wear something red. Thank you, everyone. Oh, thank you, oh, thank I've you. Got all of them. <laughs> got all Hello. of them. Of course you have. Uh, good morning. Uh, good morning. So uh, I'd just like to note that, um, that the, the most senior member of our congregation, who's uh, Edgar Braybrooks, um, passed away um, at home uh, just the other morning. And um, being a hundred and three, you know, uh, he said on his birthday, he said, when he was, he said, when I was a hundred and two, I was looking forward to being a hundred and three, but now I'm a hundred and three, I'm not looking forward to being a hundred and four. That's what he said. <laughs> and uh, you know, he he certainly was so very much connected um, with with Sir Matthews um, on the, his birthdays. You know, he was able to be here and. Uh, and certainly um, through his uh, family, through uh, Angela, who's here this morning, and through uh, uh, Susan, uh, who's also here this morning, uh, certainly kept in, in touch with all that was going on. And uh, his, his funeral will be here uh, on Wednesday, this coming Wednesday. And um, now let's see, what time is it? One o'clock, one o'clock. Uh, so you're all very uh, warmly uh, invited to come to that service as well. Um, as we bid uh, farewell to uh, Tim also support his family as well. I couldn't help but think that uh, with all that's going on in Palestine at the moment, um, Palestine was his particular passion um, and uh, it was difficult to speak with him without him talking about Palestine and his concern for the people there and, and his children. So I couldn't help but think how very contemporary 
um, his, uh, his concerns were. Uh, and again, um, we certainly um, honour Will. He's also fortunate to be as um, with it uh, as, uh, as he continued to be as well. So I'm sure I won't be like that. I've probably lost it now. But, uh, but it, was, uh, it, it is uh, just wonderful to reflect on all those years as well, isn't it? And so, uh, in this, uh, this is the last uh, week of uh, Easter, uh, and then Pentecost being next week, uh, then uh, we're going to be sprinkled with holy water, um, and I'm sure they do that all over the world. Uh, I know uh, Jonathan here, who, is, uh, who comes uh, nearly every week, is a boarder at, at Scott's, he comes from Leeton, um, and uh, he comes... Uh, he comes uh, by himself, and he's very well behaved. And I can say that because his grandmother's here this morning. Uh, uh, Judy is sometimes known as Grandma, uh, and uh, uh, from Leeton as well, uh, keeping your eye on him. He's doing an excellent job. Anyway, he's not letting down the team. So we're going to stand if we're able um, as we sing uh, the hymn, The Head That Once Was Crowned With Thorns, Crowned With Glory Now. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We open our hearts to receive God's blessing. May God bless us and hold us close. May God's light shine for us and from us and those for whom we pray. And God's love be with us always and give us peace. And may the blessing of God the Father, the grace of God the Son, and the friendship of God the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us and those we love and those for whom we pray today and always. Amen. Go in peace as we continue to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah.
Hello, I love you. Ga 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 ga. <laughs> What kind of stuff after 40, my mom? <laughs>